Well, um, thank you very much. Uh, getting towards the end of the day. Um, as you can see by the empty seats, but thanks for sticking with me. Uh, see what I did there? So, uh, <laughs> today, yes, I'm going to be uh, giving you a few uh, tips and tricks on how to use the Seeker Marine Ranger products uh, properly. Um, I believe we have the best sealants and adhesives for the marine uh, market and their applications. But if they're not used correctly and the surfaces aren't uh, prepared correctly, then quite frankly, uh, it, it's a bit of a waste of time using them because uh, it's like anything. Preparation is the, is the key for, for getting uh, the bonds and the seal correct. It's just something good habits to get into when, when you're using the products. Um, the surface preparation, what we're talking is um, light abrasion for bonding two substrates together. When I say uh, light abrasion, nothing more um, aggressive than scotch right or wire wool. Uh, you don't want to be abrading too aggressively because if you go too aggressive with too coarse uh, 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 sandpaper or glass paper, you can be putting uh, crevices into the or striations into the surface and the sealant won't wet out so it won't bond. So you can go too hard on your, your abrasion. So that's why we just say Scott Spray. All you're doing is, is basically roughing up the surface but not too much. And that would be on typically GRP, uh, the gel coat, or on the layer, the, the other side. But normally it's on, on the gel coat. And the same for aluminium as well, if you were using aluminium. <laughs> aluminium generally has a, an oxide layer coating. Uh, it's it's form of rust, if you like, just like you get rust with uh, ferrous, iron-based, like steel and whatnot, aluminium rusts as well, but it's, it's like an oxide that forms on the surface that you don't see. And abrading is always a very good way of removing that and providing a good key for the adhesive to be used. So, after abrasion, cleaning is a very, very good idea, a solvent clean because it may be greasy, it may be oily, there may be dust on it or uh, fingerprints or whatever. Um, a solvent clean, we have a cleaner called Super Remover 208, which is, which is very good for that. Um, but we also have a product called Super Activate 205. The Super Activate 205 is an excellent product to use on non-porous substrates. <clears throat> when I say non-porous, what I'm trying to say is don't use it on wood. Because if you use it on wood, it soaks in and it doesn't come back out. So non-porous substrates. What this is, is an alcohol-based cleaner. So it takes off all your oil and grease, but it's also got an adhesion promoter within it. And that adhesion promoter gives a, uh, an excellent bonding opportunity for the sealant and, and the adhesive you use it. That gets left behind, <coughs> excuse me, that gets left behind as the solvent evaporates. So you shouldn't think that you can use this as a, clean, a general purpose cleaner because I've seen people try and use it on glass because they've got a bit of dirty glass and they've, they've used this product and they thought, oh, that's brilliant. They've walked away, they've come back and as the alcohol's dried, it's left behind a milky sheen deposit, which is almost impossible to remove. So don't use that on, 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 for general purpose cleaning. It's literally only being used where the, you're going to bond or seal. We say to use disposable lint-free tissue. And you're literally just <clears throat> damping the tissue. You don't want to be slopping this on. That doesn't make it any better. Uh, doesn't make any better bonds if you if you slot it on. You just dampen the tissue. Don't do what I've seen some people do. They use the insert and they poke holes in it and they use it like a bottle of vinegar. 
that's no good, you get through it, it's, it's, it's not cheap to buy and you get through a can in no time at all. You just need to damp the tissue, that's all you do. And it's literally one wipe down where the adhesive is going to go. And you can see it's there, what you're, you're taking off the aluminium doing there. <coughs> Don't be rubbing it like that, because you're just transferring the dirt around. So it's just one wipe down. That's why we say disposable tissue because you throw it away and you get a new piece. Trouble is with using a rag is that you tend to keep reusing it and reusing it and reusing it and all you're doing is transferring dirt back onto the surface. So the same would apply for uh, GRP or any other type of plastic that you're bonding to. So that's surface preparation. So then you can go on with our sealants and adhesives. If you don't know the range, we start off with this, the, the, the general purpose sealant, the 291i, which is for all sealing jobs around the, uh, your boat, um, for your fittings, your cleats or whatever, um, around frames. Then you've got 292 I, which is a step up. This is for structural bonding where you're literally bonding things together and you're not relying on any additional screws or fixings. That's going to take the weight and you need the strength and the adhesion properties. So we'd always recommend that above the 291i for sealing, for bonding. There's a distinct difference between the two there. Uh, 295 UV which is primarily used for uh, bonding in plastic windows, uh, the, uh, PMMA windows, polycarbonate windows and the like. It's very flexible adhesive when it is cured because plastic windows have enormous movement when they're exposed to, to heat, sunlight. They will move quite a bit, so you need a flexible sealant uh, adhesive there to help take up that flex. Now, I often get asked, and I've been asked on more than one occasion today, um, what happens when you use one of our products and you only use a small amount and then you put it away in a toolbox or cupboard and then you come back to it a month later and it's cured and you can't use it anymore. You spend a lot of money on that uh, product and then you can't use it and you've wasted three quarters or two thirds of the tube. There is no easy answer to that because the mechanism of how our adhesives cure is by taking moisture out of the, of the air and that kick starts its curing process. So once you've broken that seal in the end, that starts the curing process. There's nothing you can do to stop that then once you've opened it. You can slow it down. Um, you can put it in the fridge. Lowering the temperature, uh, lowering the humidity will make it last longer. But once that cures down through the nozzle and hits the neck, then effectively you can't use it again. You can, once, whilst it's still curing down, you can change the nozzle, put a fresh one on, and then you can carry on using it. But once it hits there, you won't get it out anymore. Or, alternatively, we do a smaller version of the 291, the general purpose sealant, which is 70 mil size. So effectively, you're not having to buy a whole cartridge. For smaller jobs, you can use this for it. And this is a quite a unique packaging design. Um, it's got a little crimp, metal crimp there. All you have to do is snip the end off <laughs> screw the nozzle on and then cut it to what dimension you want and then using the sardine can key that comes with the product, 
that slots on the end like so and then you can gun out the sealant and you've just got a small handy pack to use. The other problem that, uh, or not problem, but a better way of bonding two substrates together is the way you cut the nozzle. If you're bonding two substrates together, you want to get both surfaces completely wetted out with the adhesive. And using a, a rounded bead or flat bead like that isn't the ideal way of getting that surface contact. So what we say to do is that ultimately you want to end up with a V-shaped nozzle. So you can get a normal nozzle, like so, that comes with, with the product, cut off completely horizontal across the nozzle, and then cut a V into it. This gives a much better profile See there, you've got like now a triangular bead. And when that's compressed, effectively the bead collapses in on itself, and you can be totally sure that you've got both surfaces wetted out. It's quite a novel way of ensuring you've got a good bonding. Obviously with our adhesives, when it comes to bonding, they're flexible. They work on their flexibility, that's how they get their strength and their performance. It's absolutely no good pushing that all the way down and squeezing all the adhesive out because you've lost the key to its performance, which is its flexibility. So if you are bonding, two substrates together, it's always better to put spaces in to ensure that you don't squeeze it out. It's human nature to think, right, I'll give it some welly, and but you just squeeze all the adhesive out. So uh, a rubber spacer is ideal for making sure that you can still push it as hard as you like, and then you don't get all the adhesive squeezed out. What people have done is actually gun out some Superflex and let it cure and then cut it to the uh, thickness they want and use that cured Superflex as a spacer. And that's an ideal way of doing it. Another question I've been asked many times today, and it's quite good coming on this late actually because I'm able to respond to the questions I've had, is um, sometimes people say, what, what can I do? Superflex is, it, it sticks far too well. And I want to take my window out, I want to take my depth fitting off, I want to, I want to remove it. And the trouble is, is that your stuff is stuck. Way, way too good. What, what can I do? Have you got a product that will, you know, somehow release that? Well, I'm afraid you haven't. We make our adhesives to be very, very good for that purpose. And then to then suddenly say that you want to get it off, it's, it's, not, it's not easy. It can only be removed mechanically, blades, uh, cheese wire, whatever. It, it, it's a job, and I'll, I'll, I'll admit that. But we did a product called Cicolastoma 710. And this is a butyl-based sealant. And this is ideal if you've got um, like window frames, for example, that you're uh, bonding it, or not bonding in, you're fitting in, and it's got additional fixings. This product can't be used without additional fixings. All its purposes is a gasket sealant 
that's an incredibly good gasket sealant, but it can't hold the weight of a, a frame and be bonded because this product doesn't really ever go off or cure properly, but it still provides a perfect sealant between a uh, frame's window and, and the, the frame where you're putting it into. So in future, if you want to remove that window, you can take the fixings out and with just a slight bit of effort, the window comes out and you don't have to destroy it or use cheese wire or blades or whatever. It's got a consistency almost like chewing gum. It comes in white, grey or black. This is um, white, but it's more of a, you can see by the consistency it is. It will cure, but it cures on the surface and then it remains quite um, tacky underneath. But provides an excellent seal if you need to use it just for sealant and then you want to remove something at a later date. Another question I've been asked is um, how do I finish off a seal? I've got a nice uh, seal around my windows or wherever but I want to get it looking nice and uh, finished off and not looking messy like when you've just done it out. Uh, we do a product called Tooling Agent, which uh, effectively all you have to do is dip a finger in and you can smooth off the surface and it doesn't come off on your finger. You can use a spray bottle, uh, put it in one of those you know, plant spray bottles that you get for a DIY store, uh, spray it on the, the bees perfectly compatible with it and then you can tool off and get a really really nice finish. <clears throat> if you don't want to go to the trouble or the expense of, of buying this product, quite frankly you can do the same with uh, washing up a little bit of washing up liquid and water. Uh, the reason we use it, this is a little bit of more of a complex formulation and it's the same formulation every time but washing up liquid and water is what people have used people have used spit, I don't recommend that. Um, I've also seen people use potatoes before because of the starch in the potatoes. They can cut the potatoes what they like and get a nice finish. We have other products as well, Superflex 298. Singlets 298 is a very, very um, low viscosity uh, adhesive for bonding uh, decking deck materials down, thick planks or deck. <laughs> it can only be used on a horizontal surface because it is a semi self leveling adhesive. Uh, so if you try and put it on a vertical, it will just run off. Um, the beauty of this product is that. Your application equipment is just something to snip off the end of the sausage and a trail for trailing it out. You don't need any drums or anything like that. All you do is squeeze it out. That looks rather appetizing, doesn't it? And then it's Notch trail You can see as I've trailed it that the it starts to send itself little. But then your decking material or whatever your deck can be placed on a 
and uh, it can be if you've got certain areas where maybe the deck bows slightly uh, you can wait it on that corner uh, 24 hours and then then, then it's done um, but very simple and effective to use and that is about it for my presentation unless anyone's got any questions at all about how to use secret products effectively you're saying how the tube will start here we'll start so, here yeah sorry no sorry, sorry. Are you saying how the, the tube will start here once you've got yes it? if i've got an old tube and i can get this stuff out and it seems all right is it okay uh yes uh assuming that it's within the date of of, uh, you, you've got a use by date yeah. on, on the uh, cartridge there that it should be used by. Um, I'll say that off the record, and I'm probably not off the record because I'm being filmed and uh, <laughs> whatever, but uh, if you can get the material out and it's, if there's no lumps in it, it's not stringy or whatever, and you're still able to, to, to use it, then you're fine. So you're quite honest. <laughs> I did on the same as well. <laughs> Any other questions or yeah, that's it. Okay. Thank you. All right.